everybody. Welcome to The Herd. I'm LaRue. This video will be a more detailed version of my conversion of my GMC C5500 Top Kick X-U-Haul truck. Let's get to it. Let's go ahead and start on the outside. You can see Starting from the back passenger side, I've installed two Max Air fans. As well as you can see the inlets for the two freshwater tanks and a drain for that's connected to both of those tanks. And uh, the emergency exit window. That's one of the four windows that I put in it. Moving around the cab. Now when it comes to painting, I stuck to the original U-Haul paint scheme I just taped it off and painted what was orange gray and these two orange stripes that were on the top I painted those black and then the bumper was white I painted that black and just did that all the way around kind of refreshed the black paint that was already black the steps and things but I repainted them black and I installed three windows on the driver's side which is also where the drain for the plumbing is Oh, and I painted the inside of the rims black also. And where the exhaust, that's the exhaust for the um, range over what will be the cooking area. And I took the sliding door out and built this wall. And I used the aluminum rails that were already in the U-Haul uh, for strapping things to the side and I cut them down and built the solar panel racks with those. So that was a little save on some money. And they hold just well, just right. I think that's all for the outside that I did. Well, as you can see, I painted the uh, those uh, exposed aluminum rails along the side that hold the box together all a gray um, to match the cab and then I repainted the side walls of the box white which already needs a repaint <laughs> the cab was just a regular GMC C5500 cab and it needed some upgrades so I took out the glove box and I made that area a place where my future upgrades and electronics all will kind of center around. I added a backup camera and mounts for my iPad and my phone. And I accented all the plastic pieces in the cab white just to kind of give it flavor. And start with the door of the truck because I think this door is pretty unique. Um, I had a hard time finding a door that I was happy with. I didn't really like the RV doors with the little window. And when I found this one, I really liked it. And so that's the one I put in. And I don't see it very often, so I think it's one of the rare doors that you can get for an RV. All of the lights work on remote in sequential order coming from the door to the back. So one will be right in the dining room, two right in the kitchen, three is the bathroom, and four will be right here in the living room. I built a platform to house the water system and on top of that I built a normal booth RV dinette which transforms into a bed which I still need cushions for. If anybody makes custom cushions for cheap, contact me. The bench seats and the platform under are hollow, which make for great storage. I centered the water tanks in the middle of this entire thing so that I could make sure the storage goes all the way through the bench seats down to the subfloor without being interrupted by the water tanks. Above the dinette sits one of the two Max Air fans. Across from the dinette sits one of the three TVs, a MoFi router, and two 
of the speakers connected to the two zone surround sound system. The 600 watts of solar feed into this cabinet shelf that I built. It houses the solar charge controller, the 12 volt fuse box, and the breakers for those. I put the kitchen and the bathroom in the middle of everything to kind of help with the concept of having things be private and open at the same time. I wanted to have four different spaces that you could separate and have four different things going on all at the same time. Just beyond the dining room, right before the kitchen, is a fold up and down piece of the cabinet that I'll use for extra counter space and a cooking area. The kitchen is made up of some overhead cabinets, a five foot bottom section with a double well sink, a retractable faucet, one of the TVs, and the water heater, which is six gallons. This pattern I put on the bathroom entry wall is panels. It came, came like that, it's not wallpaper. Came panels already with the graphic on it and I just cut the panels, full panels, into place. And put the bathroom door on a sliding barn door rail system which I think is just very, very beautiful, very nice. Um, when I was designing this, um, I always knew that I would put the bathroom on a barn door rail system. And it took a little bit of finding for a rail this short. These rails tend to be pretty long, but I had to do a little searching and find a shorter one that would fit right in this very spot. And if you can see, it fit right in this very spot. <laughs> So that worked out. Um, and right here is a vent for the all of the plumbing. A little air vent. Works out perfectly. The bathroom has a shower. I still need a toilet. A vanity. And the second Max Air fan. The living room is pretty basic, I mean, as far as these things go. Um, I did get a wraparound sectional couch, which was, at, in the beginning, a little too long. So this section right here had an armrest and uh, maybe about 12 more inches to it, which I folded the leather back, cut it down, and made sure it fit right in here where it's supposed to and I think it came out great. I put a little shelf right here for holding remotes and whatever um, and actually I used that shelf right there to hold whatever device I use on the projector. The living room also has an emergency exit. A stereo head unit and two speakers above the projector screen complete the two zone surround sound system. The loft area concludes the tour Right now it just has its own TV, but I will be building it into its own sleeping area. As always, thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe if you like this video or want to see more like it. I have a lot more projects in the future that I'll be doing. So until next time, thanks again.